Hello and uh, welcome back to our uh, series FTT Chats. My name's Charlie Onions, Product and Content Associate here at uh, VC Innovations. I'm delighted to welcome Rachel Honeyset here today. Uh, she is the Green Mortgage Campaign Lead at the Green Finance Institute. So welcome, Rachel. Lovely to have you. Thank you, Charlie. It's lovely to be here. Brilliant. So I think we should get right get stuck right in. So if you can tell me a little bit about yourself and your work at the Green Finance Institute and um, you know and what, what the GFI kind of stands for. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'll start with a bit about the GFI, really. So the GFI was established in 2019, and that was a direct response to policy recommendation that was made by the then Green Finance Task Force, and that was made for government in 2018. And the GFI was kind of born as an output of that. Um, and we sit completely independent of private and public sector, so completely independent of both those, and really as a as a as a way to drive forward innovation, to drive forward change when it comes to green finance. Um, completely independent, completely commercially focused, looking at real outcomes that can really drive change. Um, I sit within our built environment programme, of which are a number of strands, and the strand that I'm responsible for is green mortgages. Um, it's a newly created role. So this role was created in January 2023. Um, and my role, essentially my early work in this role so far, has been to really do a deep dive on the market, look at what the opportunities are, what the barriers are to entry, and what we can do that can really um, move the dial when it comes to decarbonising housing stock, because as as you will be aware, as we've discussed before, Charlie, you know that there's there's a huge opportunity there to to get involved and to really shape the way that we move forward and, and reach our kind of net zero by 2050 goals. And mortgages play a really key part of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, mortgages are definitely a hot topic right now, and will be a hot topic um, at the event that you'll be speaking. So, for features of a green mortgage. What are the key elements? of a modern green mortgage uh, and how do they directly benefit customers? I think when you think about green mortgages at the moment, I think what's quite nice to visualise is a, a long, nice long winding path that goes uh, that goes through a forest. And if you imagine that path with steps on it, where we are in the market at the moment is we're on step one of that path. So we do have some products on the market. They typically tend to work in two ways. So either through incentivizing through product design, so things such as um, a cashback product or a, a discounted um, rate, product rate, whether that's additional borrowing, purchase, remortgage, et cetera. Or we see incentivization through um, borrowing. So things like afford enhanced affordability, which we've seen a couple of lenders come to market for now for uh, better performing homes in terms of energy performance. That's what we've got on offer at the moment. And they're really key and really important steps as we start the conversation around green mortgages so really grateful for the products that we've got on the market at the moment but definitely um, so much more that we can do to when we look at product innovation as we start mapping out where we are now but also where we want to be in three five ten years time um, lots of work to do as well yeah no i know the the amount the amount of work that needs to be done is definitely kind of reflected in the numbers i read recently the uh, uh uk climate change committees uh, they they wrote that it's going to take about a quarter of a trillion pounds uh, to effectively uh, progress with the green finance uh, um, uh, initiative uh, to, to uh, retrofit and upgrade homes by 2050 in the UK. Um, so how can lenders uh, realistically support those goals? That, that's funnily enough, that's a question that comes up quite a lot when I'm speaking with lenders. Is there generally is a sentiment of, of really wanting to do something and lots of lenders are very active in this space already. But those that are kind of earlier on that journey, I really want to do something. I'm just not sure how I can make a difference. And I think when we all think about our own personal objectives when it comes to sustainability, that's quite often when we sit back, you know, even smaller things like recycling or what type of car you're going to buy. These are the kind of things we're grappling with as a, as a society. It's no different to how that's mirrored in, in lending. I think when it comes to what lenders can do, there's a lot of the kind of softer, more holistic things that we can do in terms of lenders up and down the country have got ongoing brokers up and down the country have all got ongoing relationships with homeowners with portfolio landlords and can start to bring that into conversations that's a bit more of the softer stuff as it comes to kind of what lenders are, are facing and what they're face, facing into typically my background before coming to gfi is working for a mortgage lender and typically when we innovate to uh, to, to bring new products to market we're innovating we're starting with a consumer demand we're starting with a strong need we're currently staring into a market where there isn't that built up demand at the moment. We know it's coming. We know what's coming down the line. But at the moment, we haven't got that overwhelming consumer demand in, in, in high volumes. 
So it can be really difficult for lenders to look at something, go, okay, how can I design a product for a customer that we're not seeing or that customer that isn't quite there yet in terms of customer profiling? Um, and I think getting that balance right is really key. It's really important that we do innovate because there could be such long lead times when it comes to innovation um, and that when the market turns, the finance is there as an enabler, not a blocker. So really important that we continue this work, but uh, it's definitely not without, um, I was going to say it's challenges, but I, I, I don't, I think it's more about taking a slightly different view to how we usually innovate in our market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so kind of leading leading on from uh, you know, what lenders can do, obviously, you're going to be uh, speaking at uh, FTT Lending uh, in March alongside uh, representatives from uh, CHL Mortgages, Tandem Bank and uh, Saffron Building Society. Uh, really excited to have you there. So in, in light of that and those names and you know, the different kind of uh, areas of the sector that are going to be present there, um, how important is partnership um, and collaboration within the sector or, you know, and outside of the sector as well, externals, non-financials and, you know, boards and initiatives and institutions like yourselves. How, how, how important is that um, in uh, uh, augmenting the green finance, green mortgage mission? Firstly, thank you for welcoming back to the event because I've spoken at one of your events before and found it to be a thoroughly enjoyable experience and incredibly well run. So if anyone's out there thinking, shall I register? Absolutely do, because you'll take away a huge amount from the day. Really enjoyable. Um, in terms of how important collaboration is, we recently, so on the 28th of Feb, we released our um, broker handbook, which is the first of its kind kind of toolkit to enable brokers to have those really rich conversations and speak with their clients. And with 84% of the mortgage market being introduced via a mortgage broker, it's a segment of the market that's incredibly important to the delivery of green mortgages. That was developed now. It's a long old list, but I will read it because they do all deserve the airtime. It's been a huge piece of work that's been ongoing. Um, it's been a collaboration across the Association of Mortgage Intermediaries, the Building Societies Association, the Energy Saving Trust, Equity Release Council, hoping I'll get all of these in, uh, the Intermediary Lenders Association, LNG Mortgage Club and the Mortgage Climate Action Group. And of course, in addition to that, UK Finance, it's been a huge piece of collaborative work. And actually, all of the things that we've looked at over the last couple of years when we've seen real industry change and it's reflected, and reflected across other industries as well, it usually is a, a result of kind of cross sector collaboration. And what we tend to see is that when it comes to products that are competitive, lenders can keep their cards quite close to the chest in terms of, you know, working on something that's got a competitive edge that they want to kind of um, steal the march on. But actually, when it comes to green finance and sustainability, there is such, you mentioned the figure before, around £250 billion needing to be spent to, to improve the quality of housing stock to get to net zero. This is such a large task that it just wouldn't be deliverable without collaboration. So those kind of um, cross-sector collaborations are so incredibly important. And um, I'm working with a number of lenders to begin to feed into the campaign and look look at how we can really begin to the dial. So all of those present at the event taking part, but also further on through the event as, as I'm listening into others as well, incredibly valuable. So, yes, collaboration, incredibly important. Yeah, no, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Um, so I think that's a really solid and positive way to end uh, this edition of uh, FTT Chats. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you can catch Rachel live on stage at uh, FTT Lending on the 29th of March at Convene uh, London. So uh, all's left to do is to you know thank Rachel for joining us today. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone for watching. Um, Make sure you get your ticket to FTT Lending and we'll uh, see you there.